Hello, I'm in Denmark, uh, late August, and this is um, one of my friends, beekeeper, dedicated beekeeper, very much so. It's raining today. This is his car, he got a sign on. This is his garage. Honey from his own apiary, a clean nature product. And everything's in the garage, the car's outside, a lot of things everywhere. But the beekeeping is in perfect order. We're going to extract today, and it's raining. So we're going to see. Here's in the garden, hidden in the trees, four beehives. And we're going to extract some honey. These are Danish measurements, uh, all full depth. Here is a trolley with an improvised box. And uh, the idea is to put the full boxes into this uh, box there and strap them up. We have already, if you look carefully, uh, there's some inserts between the two top ones and <clears throat> they are uh, frames with fly screen so when the bee escape have emptied one box such a frame is put in preventing bees going up into the emptied box and the bee escape moved down one the bee escape is now on top of the second box and there's three boxes on top and we had a look yesterday, I know they are not all three is full, but there are two boxes completely capped and full. So it's going to be very interesting. Here's my host and beekeeper. They actually get in a complete New Zealand bee suit, but uh, the big the four XL size didn't quite fit him, so he using a little bit improvised. Uh, but the bees are very friendly. We're going to post them up just in case there should be some. As it's raining, I think all the bees are inside anyway make it a bit more interesting. There's a plastic thing on top. There was a few piece there. And uh, uh, apparently this was the most aggressive one of the lot we taken first. And uh, yeah, the top one, there's not much money in that one. And you can put them in a box and wash them up as it goes. And we'll just have a pause when he's doing Another little interesting feature. <coughs> is this uh, front feeder, as it will look like, but it's not. It is for supplying drinking water. And the bees take it readily, um, instead of flying away to find the water. And apparently has climbed, and quite believe it, it could be used for sugar water in autumn and spring as well. How about that? There is a nearly cat frames. Carefully Washing the bees off the have never been outside into the piney weather. If I not, I would have to have put them back in the inside the hive. Each beekeeper has his own rights. Come to the other side, nearly empty and it's only half full that top box. Anyway, we're going to have a good clean up and extract and get down to uh, two boxes and there's just a bit of honey in that and uh, tomorrow we're going to travel down to the country a couple hundred kilometers and pick up no, no Tuesday it is tomorrow we're going to kill the all four queens we have here and uh, the day after Tuesday we are going to pick up new queens pre mitered queens and put them straight in. Apparently, uh, I've been told they lay egg instantly. We are late summer now here, remember? Now there is the, with the fly screen thing, preventing them coming back in. See that? Into the second box. The bee escape had not worked very well there. Loads of bees on that. Yeah. Okay, a bit of bee boss. Mm. 
they always concentrate on these uh, half finished frames. They're completely cut, there's not very many bees on that because there's no more they can do there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like they're really happy being evic evicted like that. I can hear some around my ears. A bit concerned about <coughs> my camera activity because I got no glove on that hand or on that hand. Escaped any disturb <coughs> disturbance to my hand so far. They seem to be even less cabbage. I think we moved the frames uh, the box about yesterday. But I know further down there are uh, cap frames. The idea is to stuff the whole lot through the extractor regardless and store the empty survive for next year. No regard is if it is kept or not. That is the end of our patience. So we go on to the next chapter which will be feeding, which will be with um, tending the buckets with holes in the lid. Each hive get a bucket full. And we will see that later too. Just before we go into the honey house, we just dwell a moment with this plastic container. Uh, it's not going grass, there's some uh, three quarter full of honey and some floating granules or pebbles, which is a pumice pebbles, uh, but they are manufactured. And they float on top. The idea is to the bees can get water from there. But this is old hat now, and as we see the distance with the feed, the yellow ones feed us there, they no longer visit this. Last year I was here, there was hundreds of bees in this one, but um, that they do not have to go outside to get water and could get inside. He can see on the yellow containers over there when they're half full, quarter full and so on and fill them up again and apparently they take a lot of water in. Some of them, some of them must, must more than a litre a day. So it's not just a little bit. We're now in the honey house with the trolley and the three supers with half cap frames and uh, the strap has been undone. And we are going to have a session of finish on capping and extracting, shearing and putting the empties uh, away. All in this little honey house here. Perfect setup for a four frame, a four hive apron. There is a stainless steel container, one for each. Um, Hive. Each of them contain 50 liters, so there should be no risk of mixing the honey from one hive to another. Here, here is my host holding an electric gun capper. Uh, it looks like a very expensive and elaborate thing, and uh, it's it's like a little cheese plane, but it's I think it's vibrating, whatever it is. We have decided that it is totally useless, and we hang it back up on the wall again. And um, going back to something that works every time, which is what is called in English an capping scratcher. He's putting a thing on the on the edge of. Uh, you know, it's a towel. Uh, yeah. See if small small uh, baggets. which can be put on and uh, it's possible to hang them outside. Everything is just done in this. But now what I was going to have a look at before in this little machine here, there's a uncapping fork, that's correct word for it, not a capping scratch, so that is an abuse of a good tool. And the stainless steel tray, perforated uh, tray inside with two brackets on it, is for allowing the frames to be uncapped on. And when that's finished, they're stacked here, ready for the next one. We'll have a look at that. On top of the stainless steel bucket is a double sieve, a, a uh, white one and inside a finer one. 
and it fits all sides of the buckets, all stainless too. Mm. Now that's just the beginning of our sieve collection, but um, we have to have a look at everything. That is now also hanged back on the wall, that's totally useless in what we are going to do. We have better things than that. One of the frames are now in uncapping position. Yeah. I'll just go to the other side, my host suggest, um, so you can see it. And uh, with, with um, the uncapping is just entered back into um, the machine here. I think you can notice that it is exactly just the capping still intact and he's taken it off. So not even the cells are damaged. I don't know of anything else but a learned stable hand, steady hand that can do that. Not one clip is wasted. It's lying in about 45 degrees, it's not gonna come out. Well now with one hand movement to the other side. Might be a little difficult to find some weight balance in the extractor with these half finished frames, but um, it's a six frame extractor. A bit similar to the one we have seen in Iceland, but this time um, it is with baskets and uh, I don't know how long it took, but maybe a bit more than a minute. It's, it's not going to take long before we are ready. And it's stacked in the holding uh, tray with some brackets on. And if it should happen to drip, the next one is started. Looks like quite a golden uh, type of, of honey. You see? Clean and thin. <laughs> you couldn't get it better than that. Apparently, when I'm explaining all this, my host uh, do not understand one word of English, so I can afford to be as honest and frank as necessary to explain the whole lot. Um, no risk of offending anybody in that way then. Yeah, he said, just in, uh, underneath then pull upwards. I've seen the scratching downwards and just stuffing it in. That is a brutal way. This is a this is a, a expert's perfect way. Dry, not even wet or honey. No, you couldn't get it better than that. The other machine hang back on the wall together with the surf. But we are not abandoning the well tested ways just like that. Why scrap something there's nothing wrong with? And the argument is quicker. Um, it's not valid because we have nothing else to do anyway. We just keep a sugar pie and amused. This we now onto the third one, and that's a half machine. Thing. It won't take long before we start it. And where they are being spun and turned automatically in the machine, um, he will prepare an egg slot. I, th I think in an hour we will be two or three boxes, no trouble. So, the total harvest is not going to take more than half a day, as we can see. I think, after carefully brushing off, there's about three bees inside the honey house. There isn't light, insulated roof, and uh, and the ventilating fan. Many other interesting things we have. I have not spotted yet. Oh yeah, there's some stirs, electric stirs for for stirring the honey. And apparently, uh, last year I, I would learned that they have to be twisted um, right or left hand, 
So, um, uh, because one way it is pumping the surface in the bucket downwards, the other way is lifting it up. Uh, I never, we ever thought of that, but now the, it's very difficult to change the ones that have been manufactured. But uh, anyway, that's an interesting thought. This little control box on the extractor you sort of a medication is not quite little, quite different from the hand operated ones in old times. My host says he can actually see the chimes of the fork through the cappings. That is how close he is to it and he lifts it up and the honey stays in the cells and not on the cappings. The cappings is near the dust dry and doubt there will be any drips through the perforated bottom. And uh, it just stacks up here. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think personally that's pretty impressive and beating anything of electric heated knives or anything else you can, of water steam heated knives. No, nothing wrong with that. We have now got four frames and in starting number five. Act actually there's very little honey that's not uncapped. I, I would think 60% is capped anyway. I must concentrate on looking at my little screen so I don't get too much to one side. We're now loading the extractor. The top frame comes upwards and the bottom frame faces toward the center. Feeling one six of them. Now something of interest doesn't quite reach the bottom. These baskets here are deeper and that the Danish frames are not as wide as the uh, as long as the long stuff is. Of course um, they will sink down so far that sets along the side and, uh, they now be running freewheeling we'll just see how the little bit has come up thanks to these hands and we will now And the idea is to, to turn them so that I uh, avoid too much vibrations. We only gone one or two minutes, but it's beginning to come out. That's up there. There is a, a switch on the side here, which it, it won't start unless the lid is closed. And uh, every now and then, in the beginning here, turning the line to turn one in three wheel, so we don't get too much, too much vibration. We have all the time eight on the our hands anyway. Have a look at it. Not another thing. Use the hand as a manual brake carefully. And the baskets will return to center. Now 
Now then, they are completely empty. Very fast and efficient, both both sides. Yeah, yeah most impressive. Yeah, yeah. and the uh, funny is driving out the bottom. We stack and empty his back in a box now. Note that um, all the wiring is vertical and there's been put eyelets uh, in to prevent uh, the wiring going into the wood and becoming slack that way. And that is one of the reasons using eyelets. A bit more work of course. On the tray where we had the six frames standing has been a bit of drip off while he was uncapping and I would think not as much as it would concern anybody really very little so far we have not managed to get any trips on the floor no newspapers needed and uh, we're beginning to stack up ready for the next lot these are uncapped frames but it was actually extracted completely dry in a very fast fast time just a few minutes yeah, I, I now got the job extracting, and uh, it's just about it's a second um, go we had at spinning or extracting rather, and um, it's nearly stopping by itself, and the baskets will return to the middle. I'll try to explain how this thing works. Um, so they are now slowly coming into the middle. we started manually this doesn't do it automatically um, anyway what's happening now is we go back to the to the meter board there is right and left on that switch so we put it Bike works. And see, works very fast. Um, I, I think that um, this foot bike business is interesting. Uh, perhaps there could be a, a version for handicapped people that could operate it by hand up here. Yeah. We have a improvised toilet mirror with inscription at the bottom, I never lie. And it also tells the temperature inside and outside. Plus a calendar that tells the time and the day. So, uh, and I think something else. But anyway, we're well aware of it riding outside without having to be informed. We're now beginning the third load. A little bit of a dip up on the on the parking tray, and the host is still flat out. Quite a good frame, and uh, I don't really think there's anything. That's an expert's truss, and uh, falls down completely dry. Now back to the machine nearly coming to a stop. There's quite a bit of honey in the bottom. There's a cone step bottom. It's good instead of a flat one. The deeper baskets would enable this to be used for long stores as well. 
as the day in his measurements. And he had, in fact, been necessary to put some bolts in at the bottom so these Danish frames didn't sink down too far because they were very difficult to get out again. So we we'll have to stack and look in. Not a thing left. Completely dry. And back in empty bottle. We have now finished um, um, three boxes. And the bucket is half full. I think there will be a whole bucket inside extracted yet. And um, my, my host will now close the gate valve and empty the bucket, a lot of wax in, in the surface there, into the, his adjustable sieve, which he will have here. There's a container here to take it. And the sieve is, fit the whole lot in. One go. And it runs through at quite a high speed. And you will come out in to the bucket. There's the the trail on it is sloping towards the outlet. There it comes now. Now where I say that the sieve is adjustable as well, it's a little device consisting of a bolt in the side that fits into a hole so the whole thing can tip over later on. If it is uh, the bucket now goes back underneath and the valve, the valve is opened again. And you can now look after itself without running over. Here is bucket number one from hive number one being extracted and it's now free free of wax. See that it's very fine, very fine still. And it's so you can in fact it can be lifted off. You can see on the side just rest in a little um, thing there and you can take it outside and host host the wax out if needed. But this is a, probably the best sieving arrangement I have seen. All is stainless of course, it's all stand. Nothing wrong with it. On the wall we have various sinks, jars with eyelets, nails, a wire, reel holder and a smoker. It's all here. We will just have a look at the cappings. That is the cappings for three supers, full depth supers, and it stood over in a perforated tray. And underneath, that is what pep to next to nothing. These are I'll just try to get my hand. These are bone dried cappings. Look at that. Beautiful. Now you could not do that with any mechanical tool at all, not by a long way. Yeah, we had least we have just had a little pause with rum and cola, and um, life my host is now stacking the extracted frames. This were put in the hive in springtime as new foundation. Now they've been extracted, they're literally dry because you could extract them, and uh, literally nothing. And what he wants to do, he stacks them zigzag a little bit, if it's a bit better. He wants a certain number, and they're going to be put in a rubbish bag and sent to be melted down. Finn flatly refused to use a frame twice, a, a, a comb twice, to be pressed hard together, and he got new foundation for it. Now he got enough for one bagful, he decided how many they could go, so they get a string around it and tie it up, put it in a plastic bag, and sent for melting down. He got the hang of it, he done it many times, and he planned to use every year 40 sheets of foundation per hive. So there is not one frame in that hive they have birthday. Not ever. It's always new. This is a 100% hygienic. 
I do it to some extent myself. I use about 12 or um, maybe a bit more cartons of foundation every year. I don't really know anybody else doing it with 200 hives. But this is the only beekeeper I have ever seen or met that get it up to 100% um, dedication of um, green philosophy. This is a one-off use only. And as you saw in his uncapping thing, there is absolutely no honey left. Guaranteed, there's not even drip off of the wax. He, he uncapped with his so-called scratching fork, or whatever they call it. Um, it is an uncapping fork. And he knows how to use it. So do I, for that matter. Now we're looking for a string to, to put around it before it is sent to the destruction, melting down. No, no, well, it is now next day, and we have decided before we rub the bees for the last of the honey, I mean rubbing, we take a lot, uh, these buckets uh, of bee food mixed in with everything the bees needs. <coughs> um, <coughs> my host, <coughs> excuse me, my host, life have decided that um, this label uh, covering the small holes in the bottom of the lid for the bees to suck it out is, is too slow. And <coughs> we got some pellets of um, the best it could be compared with is is um, pumice of not compared with the mold is exactly the same as promised, but this has been manufactured in Denmark. It is clay that made into mud to boiling temperatures, uh, more than boiling, uh, it's a pretty hot mud. They put through a, um, a sieve dripping into cold water, and they literally uh, in instantly <coughs> form pillars which can float on liquid and water. So, a good layer of that <coughs> gets on top of the food and the lid goes back. The idea now is, when we have done our deed with the, with the beehives, um, such a bucket goes not upside down, but in, uh, intact as it is, uh, on, top, <coughs> on top of each beehive, and the lid is taken off. Apparently, um, what life have discovered, because he was very impatient, waiting one or two weeks for them to suck it out through these <coughs> small holes in the lid, he discovered now, <coughs> instead of two or three weeks, they could in, in fact uh, empty such a bucket in just as many days, sitting on these pillars and emptying the liquid back down into the frames. How about that? Here he's now <coughs> doing the last bucket and simply he doesn't measure it, just take it by hand until they the bucket can't contain anymore, they light as anything. And So, we will now take the buckets to the beehives. So, just standing there ready to be put on when we finished uh, taking the last honey off. Um, also, I mean, I mean the last honey, you, you'll see it. With queen extruder is removed, and anything that looked like having honey in it comes out. So, they have absolutely nothing. Getting empty foundation, sheets with empty foundation in. And then this bucket on top, uh, and an empty super around them, so the lid can fit back on. We are now um, starting to take the honey from below the queen extruder, and some of the frames are, the outside frames are just, of course, brand new found foundation, completely filled with honey. That's not the case in the middle. Uh, that is quite a lot of wood. The idea is, on this occasion, to take all 
finds out except those that are um, more or less fully capped with, with food. Anything else uh, will be extracted and melted down. At the bottom here, we see a frame with, with three old building drone cells. That is a Danish invention, uh, which is removed once every week. A bit too close, I put somewhere. And uh, then it should be the, the production of drones on um, the raw made way. Um, now, there's a little bit of honey in it, and we saw on the other side a dozen drone cells. I have extracted the body of drones and I didn't find one made. However, it has not done anything since spring, so it's, it's really in case of result. But what I do if I use a system, I put in a, a full dip frame of drone foundation. I do that twice, I seem to vacuum clean all of the raw mites out of it. Uh, the bees accumulate on the outside. Life, my host, shows no mercy. The principle here is not more severe than what I thought it would be. Um, just a quarter of food or something, it goes to melting, to melting down. What he wants is having 14 new sheets of foundation per hive each year, which means it's only a couple, maybe two or three frames with, uh, with wood that can survive the first year. And they go up about a few further. So, uh, uh, what, when we are, what we are going to do tomorrow is New queens. Today we kill all the queens. But they got a rich spot on the back this year. What they have here. These are, these are queens for last year. Um, he has saved, as far as I can see, two frames so far. The rest are not qualified to stay. And um, so then they will certainly literally have not half a frame of honey left in the hive, in these two supers, uh, when we finish rubbing them. And behind him, you will see the buckets, which will be put on with that, with this pumice, layer of pumice on top. And uh, that will be put on a uh, board with, with, on top of the second super. And to my surprise, he told me that they do not take a couple of weeks to finish the bucket. It happened in a few days. More than five. Put something on to limit, to limit them. That was merely meant to buy as a feeder box for the bucket, but we're not going to be used to that anymore. He, he has scrapped that system to peel the label off and the sugar two small holes. That is old head as far as he's concerned. The other way he's doing with Thomas Pedros is ten times faster. And that's that plan. Robbing, requeening, feeding, all in done in two days, finished and packing them down. And uh, when we finished changing um, what do you call it to the system this morning, putting Thomas Pedros on top, we were immediately invaded by armies of bees that wanted to come and pop the, the honey buckets or the, the, the feet they got there. So there's something they like, obviously, that mixture. We'll have a pause. We are now down to the bottom box, and it appears it's literally empty, 100% empty. And uh, uh, there's only one frame left. Life is wondering what to do. Exactly the last one. We already killed the queen. And it appears it's totally empty. But it had, they've gone dark. Here is the box with the new foundation, which is now going to be put in completely. Um, and
one in it. Yeah. And brand new new foundation that you're going to be put in. Of course, the bees uh, are there already. What do you? What do you think of the bees? Yeah. 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 It looks like they will be allowed to have one old one. Maybe another one. So, foundation, new foundation. But one thing is after certain they would not have one strip of honey in the bottom box when we finish this. Not sure what the idea is to have some of the old ones in. We got something there, they got some food on, and we got to have some of them in. Certainly, there was a bit of food and egg on that one, and a patch of seal food on the next one. They're allowed to keep them. It's probably also necessary for the Help of the colony. He's trying to put together as a nest in the middle, and towards the back away from the entrance. Um, now the other three is scrapped. So now foundation for the rest. After that, as far as I understand. At the moment, because I'm not quite sure, it doesn't tell me in advance what there will, what there will happen, is another box with ten frames of foundation goes on top. Then you will requeen tomorrow, and then the bucket, bucket of feet goes on top with another super round of houses. Gives me another old one, a bit more than what I thought he said he would. Anyway, that's okay. And uh, yeah, made it. Uh, now a uh, queen extruder has been put on top of the bottom box, and there is, to my surprise, uh, about um, five one-year-old frames as well. But now the. Another box with 10 frames, complete foundation, uh, is placed. And the colony and the, with the new queen is going to be windowed over in the bottom box. At this stage, there is still no honey at all in the hive, only lots of bees and two and a half frames of sealed food. No, no honey. And um, the host is now considering introducing a bucket of feet immediately. Now, in preparation for feeding, a piece of plastic is placed, a bit windy, I will assist. But it doesn't quite cover the whole thing. So, um, we know how to put the bucket on. Rick was spent for me. Now, <coughs> what we have done. Um, in preparation for feeding, put a sheet of plastic on which doesn't quite cover the whole thing. And the bucket with this 16 kilos netto of, of bee food with pumice, thick layer of pumice on top is placed. And on top of that is a, um, a, another super.
four dips, which will house, which will house the this bee food. Apparently, some two seconds in, there are bees already. Two or three of them. They're in a rubbing mood, and um, I think the bees can now come up. But we will, we will now place something else on top, the, the goof, and only the bees that belong there can now get up. But I think we'll have a look in an hour or so, see what happens. Hello. Now, this, we got a box of honey here, and apparently a lot of bees got into it because they could, um, in one corner, they could, they're still trying to. But um, life, my host, decided to get them out. Again, without too much trouble here next to the beehives, but I didn't take them away. We put a beescape on, upside down. We got to watch. There's a two small holes in in the in the left hand side. On the other side, it's perforated. They can't get in. So we put it upside down and see they're coming out at a high rate, but they can't get back in. The four places in the corner is um, ice cream, so it's a modified a little bit. But it does work. They're coming out fast. Many a little pause and now come again. So I think. We will have a good out bees. My host says we have time for a beer while this is happening. But they're certainly in the robbing mood, no doubt about that. We have today replaced three of the hives over here with new queens um, in, in a queen box, little uh, plastic box. And uh, we couldn't find we could not find the, the fourth one, so we have put the whole lot out on a, some white paper in the hope that we could find the queen that way. They are now busy flying back to the hive there. Uh, apparently, we have been trying a few days to find the queen, could not. But it looks like today we shake the frames clean and put the frames back. There was numerous queen cells on the frames, so I think the conclusion is uh, she has escaped and they were queenless anyway and in the last few days desperately tried to to create a new queen. <coughs> However, we proceeded uh, with, the, with, the, with the search and here they are lying on the paper. I think that's all the younger ones, there was a, a, quite a big colony. I think it's all the younger ones that can't yet quite fly. They're not flying back. And it doesn't look like there's any queen either. Interesting. Um, we didn't find the queen, so we dragged the whole paper up next to the to the hive again. And guess what? All those I think they can't fly yet decide to walk home in mass. And I suppose we can see it. I don't know if I can. and straight back into the hive. That's okay, save us. Scaring them or, or carry them home, they, they can walk cell. Not a problem. Apparently, a little machine here, which we were experimenting with, a wallpaper shiller. Um, it's a little container contain a few liters of water and it's plugged into a three pin plug into the electricity and on the other side it had a flat thing which will expose, pump out steam and putting that on an old frame it will it will actually dismantle the frame in in a period of time not very fast and uh, we tried that uh, uh, even more interesting there was another one it looks very much like a prickler. And that is apparently also designed to loosen the wallpaper. But um, with a bit of experimenting, it might be adapted into beekeeping equipment. Interesting. We are <coughs> up by the scales trying to weigh in the honey. And uh, 
Go out and press some set of scales. Well, what do you expect when you've got bees? You've got to have something. And I think 37 kilos in that one. It is a stainless steel 50 kilo bucket. Okay, with a, a tap on the bottom. Put four of them for four hides. That's how it should be. Okay. We are, we have just done the last the last frame the last uh, rather uh, feeding of the bees with the pumice pebbles on top, and that was a way we couldn't find the queen. But that's not done it now. Now we'll see what has happened to the ones that got a full bucket two days ago. And there was, I remember there were 16 kilos in it. See, they built a bridge across there where they take it, take it out. And that's impressive. There will only be a, a third left, I should think. Not even that, maybe a quarter. How about that? Hello, that is then a goodbye for this time. My host is now checking. Everything's done, fit for the window. And remember, this is uh, absolute. Let's put it up on, on small stands here, on the concrete slabs. So, um, absolute nothing left of, of this. Um, we'll put it back. Uh, the last remark I want to say that 40 sheets of foundation per hive and when they come out and, and we are sent back to melting down then if there is some frames just with foundation the bees never used it they go back and get melted down too this is um, an absolute exchange total and there's no honey left and we feed artificially the whole lot, and they take it very fast. Uh, now, anybody who watches this little film, I have one, one thing to say. Never begin to say, I do this, I do that. Only criticize this film if you can do it better. And I think it's not, nothing wrong with it, really. It's, but of course, it's very different from anything else I have seen. <laughs>